Good morning, this is Lasfeld. I am done streaming and I was doing another paint chart on stream to talk about reverse clocks. And I think now is the time that I make a little video uh, explaining um, a few charts that I have. Okay, so this is going to be about reverse clocks. It's going to be about short inputs versus long inputs. It's going to be about tornado spin and holding an input. So we're going to see a few different things. Um, it's not about something specific. But hopefully I can talk about um, a few things that, I, um, that I've made on paint in order to help people uh, learn. So this is kind of a mix of a few different things. And uh, I think it's about time I did that. So let's just, uh, let's just uh, you know, let's just uh, go to the first one. So for, we're going to start off by uh, doing this, okay? Uh, what kind of inputs do we have when we air roll? So this is a chart that kind of explains this in a very simple way. On neutral revolution, of course, we always talk about the neutral revolution. On neutral revolution, either you make one input per revolution. I call them small inputs or short inputs, which is not really true because short input would mean that you let go of the input quickly, but that's not what I mean. Um, neither is small input. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call them small input here. But uh, I should call them unique inputs, actually. Maybe I'll start doing that from now on. Um, that means one input per revolution. So this is the classic up, right, down, right that you've heard from other tutorials. Okay, so this is one way to turn. And <clears throat> there's also long inputs, which are continuous inputs per revolution. And we're going to see what all of them uh, are. Some tutorials talk about those long inputs, which I call the reverse clocks. Um, mostly, uh, they don't really go in depth. They kind of lack explanation as to what the inputs do and how fast you do the, the, the reverse clock. And don't worry, because we're going to come to that um, in, a, in a little, little while. So if we just take small inputs, which means unique inputs, I'm sorry, which means one input per revolution, we have what I call directional inputs or non-directional inputs. When I talk about directional inputs, I mean that the car is going to um, start turning as soon as you press the input, okay? So I'm just launching Rocket League. I should have done that before, my bad. I don't want to make you wait for nothing. So when, I, when you press directional inputs, like all of the inputs from up or all of the inputs from down, you will start turning while strafing right or left, okay? So that's what I call directional inputs. You also have non-directional inputs, um, which are, well, the left and right, the tornado spin, the reverse tornado spin. Yeah. And those don't make you turn. Those do not make you turn if you hold them on one revolution. So that's one input per revolution. Then we have long inputs. And with within the, those long inputs, either we have directional inputs, which I shouldn't call them uh, like that right now, which are basically the reverse clocks. Okay. And when you do reverse clocks, there's all of the reverse clocks, all of the inputs on the joystick when you do reverse clocks, all of them are going to be directional inputs. So left and right, which are tornado spin and reverse tornado spin, which usually don't make you go, to, don't make you turn when you press them on one revolution. If you use them as a starter input on, an, on a reverse clock, they will make you turn. Okay. And depending on where you start them and at which speed you do them and how long you do them, you're going to have different results. This is why I teach feedback loops, which are also long inputs, continuous inputs. I teach feedback loops mostly to teach people about rhythm because if they have no rhythm, they're going to have a really hard time learning reverse clocks. Okay, because reverse clocks, again, depending on where you start them and at which speed you do them and how long you do them for, they're going to have different results. Okay, so that was it for this one. Okay. Now, if we, well, well, let's go to this one. This is something you can find on the internet. I didn't make that. Um, this basically shows you those short inputs. See those small input, one input per revolution, right? Directional inputs up, down, or non-directional inputs, left, right, tornado, reverse tornado. That's what it is. Okay, so let's say if you press right, and you, you keep it for one revolution, your nose is going to go this direction. Right? And it's the most important thing about this is that 
if you keep it from one revolution, it's going to come back to its original point. This is really important when you want to do exercise two of my method on a rings map, for instance, and you want to keep verticality. Uh, I did a video called a conversation on exercise number two. And on, in this video, I talk about the, 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 the most common mistake people do when they use exercise number two in a rings map is that they press, let's say their arrow left and they want to go to the right. They're going to press up at each revolution, but they're going to make short inputs. That means that every time they, if they let go and they make a short input, the nose is going to be here or here or here, right? And so what happens is that when you press up, your nose is still going to go down. So they end up getting very horizontal. And what I tell them is that if you want to go to the right while keeping verticality, you can also keep your joystick, keep your input for one whole revolution because you will strafe to the right, right? You will strafe to the right while also working on keeping the same verticality. Now, if I do this, for instance, let me let me show you real quick in free play. This is why sometimes I don't really like saying, oh, shit, this game is so dead, dude. Why would you do this? Oh, my goodness gracious. So if you keep an input for one revolution, so let's say I'm here, right? I'm going here. If I go up for one revolution, watch what happens. I strafed to the right, but my nose didn't change direction. So this is why I, I use the word strafe instead of turn. If I let go of the input in between the revolution, of course, my nose will be turning. Okay? But when, when you do one input per revolution, because the nose makes a circle... It cannot go farther than this circle. So you're going to turn. There's a limit to how much you're going to turn when you do one input per revolution. That's why we use reverse clocks. 180, boy. Okay, so this is what this thing shows. Okay, moving on to the next one. I hope this video is okay. I'm sorry if I didn't edit any of this. But this just shows you all of the inputs relative to the tornado spin in arrow left and to the reverse tornado spin in arrow left. So all of those inputs, so up, right, right, down, right, and down, all of those inputs are relative to the tornado spin side of the joystick, which means that the nose, when you start pressing those inputs, the nose is going to go up. If you press any of the other inputs here from the reverse tornado side um, uh, part of the joystick, your nose will go down. Right? So if you press up, up left, left, or down left, the nose is going to go down. That's all it means. So this is why, basically, that's why I say in the thesis, the reason people say go upright and downright without ever explaining why is because those two inputs, upright and downright, their relative, see, downright and upright, they are relative to the tornado spin side of the joystick, meaning your nose will go up. And of course, when you lose control of a plane at full speed, you would rather go towards the sky at full speed than towards the ground because that means you're going to die and nobody likes dying. Okay, moving on. <clears throat> okay, so this is something I made a while ago. Um, it's called joystick patterns to turn right in arrow left with reverse clocks. Actually, there's also arrow right that I made here. So if you want to turn to the right with arrow, uh, arrow left, with reverse clocks, here's what you can do. You can either make a reverse clocks from from the uh, the right um, the upright side of your joystick right there slowly, right? So reverse clock slow with nose up to go right, right? Or you can go a reverse clock very fast from down. And this is not very accurate because actually you need to go over half of the reverse clock. But we're going to come back to it. So this is something I made. I just made something a bit better here. So this one. Is that the end? That's the end. So let me explain. This is a bit scary. But don't panic. This is really easy to understand. This is those two things, by the way, those two ones, they go together. This is a continuation of this. Right. So let's look at this first. Blue means slow rhythm. Pink means fast rhythm. Okay. Reverse clocks to go left, starting from down right, which is here, to left and up. So if you want to do, if you want to turn to the left in arrow left, you can do slow reverse clocks starting from the input down right or down or down left. 
all of those will make you go to the left. But you can also make fast reverse clocks by going left instantly. If you go slow, you're not going to go left. But if you go fast enough, you're going to go left. Or you can also uh, go up and go more than half the reverse clock is necessary, which means more than half. So from here, more than half reverse clocks. So you have to go over the bottom and maybe go to the right, like three quarter reverse clocks, maybe. Okay, so if you go up, left, down, right, very quickly, you will go to the left. But be careful because this, uh, it's a bit f harder to do, of course. Faster rhythm, rhythm, it means also you need to, I guess, know your car more. Because if you do those slow reverse clocks, you're going to have the result instantly. It's going to be easy. Even if you're just starting off doing reverse clocks, that's going to be pretty easy, I'm guessing. But the fast reverse clocks are always a bit harder. Okay. Now, if we want to go the opposite way, reverse clocks to go right, starting from upright to right and down. So if you want to go to the right using reverse clocks, either you make slow reverse clocks from upright or up or up left. Those reverse clocks, if you do them slowly, will make you go to the right. And just like the other one, you can also do fast reverse clocks from either right but you have to do it fast, quickly, in order to go right, or even down. And again, you have to go more than half a reverse clock. You have to go like at least three quarters of a reverse clock in order to go to the right uh, when, when doing that. So for instance, if I just show you, if I want to go to the right while using a, a, a down reverse clock, um, this is not going to be enough. I'll have to do this and this. Let me show you. There we go. But the rhythm is quite, if you just don't do it fast enough, boom, you're going to go left. Because it's down means slowly down, like down when it's done slowly means go left. So if you want to go right, you have to go extremely fast. Oh, that was, boom, I fuck up. You have to do this, right? Then you're going to see that there's some subtleties. See here, the nose was a bit more horizontal. Um... There's a bit of sub subtleties, but that's something I'm guessing, I don't really want to... This is already me going in depth. If I start going more in depth, then it's going to be a lot of things that you could just figure it out for yourself. And even though I don't like saying that, at some point, you know, your own feeling is going to teach you so much more than I could ever teach you. Right. But here you have some theory, at least. OK, so if I go if I want to go to the right, up, right, up and up left will make me go to the right if I do them slowly. Right. See, I do them slowly. This is also slow, and this is also slow. But I can also start from the bottom and going over the half reverse clock very fast, like this. Okay, again, boom. That makes me go to the right. Now, you may ask, but what's the difference? If I can go any direction with any reverse clock, then what's the difference? Well, hey, I've just been talking about horizontality here. I did not talk about verticality. So what's the difference? Well, if you press an input from the downside of your joystick, you will go up, right? If it's from the tornado spin side of the joystick. So let me show you the graph. Here in green, you can see the parts of the joystick. Remember, you remember this, this right there? These are the parts of the joystick that makes you go, makes your, your nose go up or down. So if you start a reverse clock from upright. In order to go to the right, your nose will be up. If you start it from up, your nose will not go up. And if you start it from up left, your nose will not go up. And we can confirm this. If I go up, my nose is not going up. Well, it is because I'm boosting, but if, if, I, if I do the reverse clock, I'm not going up. If I go up left, I'm not going up either. But if I go upright, boom, I'm going up. Okay. And the same thing for goes for, for, for down, of course, uh, whatever reverse clock I'm doing, either fast or slow, if it starts from all of those input down, down, left, right, and upright, my nose will go up. So if I do the fast reverse clock to go right from down, remember, I have to go over half the reverse clock like this, my nose goes up because I started from a down input. The way, the, the ways this, this thing works is that when you do slow reverse clocks, if I if I go down right up, for instance, if I go slowly, 
the rhythm and the timing at which I do those other inputs correlates to the angle of the car the same way the first input does. So basically, when I do those inputs at the right moment, at the right speed, at a certain speed, they're going to be the same for the car. So I'm enabling the same direction to be made. That's why I keep on going left. Do you understand? And if I do them faster, well, then I'm kind of killing the opportunity for, for the input to be, to be done properly by the car. So I'm going to cut its... Imagine if the direction that you can take is, a, is like a, a fan going from, he, going from here to here. If I do the reverse clocks faster and faster, I'm going to kill those first opportunities of direction. And I'm going to land on those opportunities of direction. That's why this makes me go left. But this, which is the same thing, makes me go up. Because I'm killing the, the opportunity for their left vectors to appear. Do you understand what I mean? Hopefully you do. Okay, so let's go back to the chart. So again, let me say that again. If we, let's say we want to go to the left, you can start by going down right, which will make your nose go up, or down, which will make your nose go up, or down left, which will not make your nose go up. Okay? If you want to go right slowly, you can start from upright, which will make your nose go up, or up, which will not make your nose go up, or up left, which will not make your nose go up. See, I, I wrote here, nose goes down from here to here. Nose goes up, I'm sorry. And here, nose goes down from here to here. Okay? Good. And so this one here is a continuation of the one we just saw. So slow reverse clocks are in blue. Fast reverse clocks are in pink. So turn left. So you go the. This is arrow left. So this direction would be a reverse clock. Okay? So you can turn left by doing a slow reverse clock from here or from here or from here. Now the, the nose is going to be either up or down and down. Or you can do it from here very fast, fast reverse clocks from the left or from up while going at least three quarters of a reverse clock like this. And to turn right, it's the same thing. You can go slowly from up left or up or up right. So up right will make you go, will make your nose go up, but up and up left, up left will not make your nose go up. And those reverse clocks will make you turn to the right. Or you can also um, uh, do a fast reverse clock by going uh, down. So at least three quarters of a uh, reverse clock. Okay. And this is a mistake. What is this? No, this should be going to the right, not to up left. So you can also go to the right, full right, not up right, but full right very quickly. And this will also make you go to the right. Okay, good. I hope uh, those things could enlighten you a little bit more. I'm sorry. This was kind of in, you know, I did it in the spur of the moment. I didn't really, uh, 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 you know, um, write anything down. I was talking about it on stream and I thought, hey, if I don't do this now, I won't want I will not want to do it later. So here it is. I hope this could enlighten you a little bit more about reverse clocks and inputs in general. I think those things are interesting. So hopefully some of you might find it interesting. Don't forget to write down your questions if you have some and to um, to ask them on stream uh, because usually uh, I take the time to answer. If I know the answer, usually I do, but sometimes, you know, I don't. Okay, well, this is Lasfeld, and um, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. You guys take care, and goodbye in three, two, one. Goodbye.